All right, welcome back to the lab. We are studying the skeletal system, and today we're going to go through the axial skeleton. Now, the axial skeleton, we've uh, I've been through the appendicular skeleton in another video, and I've also been, gone through the uh, skeletal structure of the skull. So we're finishing up here with the axial skeleton, and it starts with the top of the spinal column. These vertebrae that make up the neck, there are seven of them, are known as cervical vertebrae, and they're numbered. First one is C1, then C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. There are seven cervical vertebrae. And one of the features of the cervical vertebrae is that they have these holes in the transverse process, process called the transverse foramen, or trans, plural would be foramina. And these transverse processes of the vertebrae actually uh, contain a blood vessel in life, and that's what's simulated here by this plastic uh, piece on the model. Now, the body of the vertebrae are the solid parts that are the weight-bearing parts of the vertebrae. You can see these from the ventral side. You can see we're looking in from the front or ventral side of the uh, individual. And this bone that's uh, right below here is the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone in life actually is a little horseshoe shaped bone that lives right underneath the, uh, the tongue here and supports the tongue, it supports the muscular structure of the tongue so that you can do things like press your tongue to the roof of your mouth and say words like tongue. On the back, the vertebrae have these spinous processes. And the hole going down through every vertebra, down through which the spinal cord passes in life, is known as the vertebral foramen. So these are the seven cervical vertebrae, and again, we know them because they're the neck vertebrae, and they're identifiable by their foramina in the transverse process. None of the other vertebrae in the body have that. Then there are 12 vertebrae that are thoracic vertebrae, and thoracic vertebrae are easily identifiable because of the sort of downward pointing spinous process, uh, and even the, the early ones that don't have that, they all articulate with ribs. So there are 12 ribs on each side, 24 ribs in all. Of these ribs, the first few ribs actually articulate directly rib to a piece of cartilage. You can sort of see the depression here on the model that's supposed to represent cartilage here, and this is supposed to be bone. It's kind of cheap. They use one kind of plastic. And then the breastbone, the sternum here. The manubrium, gladiolus, and xiphoid process of the sternum. So these first ribs are true ribs. They go bone to cartilage to bone. But when we get down here, we call these ribs false ribs because it goes bone, cartilage. The cartilage connects to more cartilage. See how this connection occurs here? And then to bone. Okay. If you go down far enough, you actually see a kind of rib at the bottom here, this one and this one that don't connect to any articular cartilage at all and that uh, or costal cartilage sorry at all and those are floating ribs so we have true ribs false ribs and then floating ribs 12 ribs each side 24 ribs in all that's in the thoracic region if we uh, if we look up into the uh, the cavity here of the the thoracic cavity we can actually see the body of the thoracic vertebrae down below the thoracic region starts the lumbar region, and there are five lumbar vertebrae. Okay, so that's L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. Okay, they have large, thick bodies because they support the weight of the torso, and flat, blunt, spinous processes. In the model here, we're showing a, a slipped vertebrae, if you're wondering what that red structure, or slipped vertebral disc, if you're wondering what that uh, structure is. The bone right below, the, uh, the last, the L5 lumbar vertebra, is the sacrum. So we'll go ahead and look at that from the dorsal side. We have the sacrum here, which formed uh, originally from fused vertebrae, and we're showing how the nerves actually come out, these foramina, these holes in the sacrum. And then the bottom bone on the axial skeleton is the coccyx, or the coccyx. Now, this larger piece here, of course, is your pelvis, and the pelvis is composed of three bones that fuse together in adulthood. This one is the ilium, this one the ischium, and then up front, 
we have the pubis, right? So the pubis, the ischium, and the ilium. And they have features. The ilium has this iliac crest. It's named after the Iliad, Homer's Iliad, where the soldiers wore a helmet with a crest on top. This feature on the pelvis is called the acetabulum. And the acetabulum is the socket into which the head of the femur articulates to form that ball and socket joint. And then right down here, these are our ischial tuberosities uh, that we sit upon, right? the, your sit-upon bones. This joint in the front where the two pubic bones meet is known as the pubic symphysis. Okay. So we also have on the ischia these spines that poke in to the pelvic cradle or pelvic girdle. And uh, pardon me, this, uh, this space would be the birth canal in a woman, but you can see how these spines are actually pointing into that canal, and there would not be not be room, and especially the, the coccyx is actually bent in as well. So this is a male pelvis that we're looking at. Okay, here you can sort of see that articulation of the head of the femur into the acetabulum of the pelvis. All right, we're almost finished. We have one more bone to examine, and that bone is the scapula. The scapula is the shoulder blade. Here's the spine of the scapula, its blade. And then from the front, we can, and, and lateral sides, we can see a few structures. This one right here is the glenoid cavity. Okay, not this metal part, but this slightly hollow point where the head of the humerus articulates to form a ball and socket joint. And then up at the top here, the very topmost process is the acromion process. It's the one on which shoulder pads would sit. And then this one is known as the coracoid process. If I turn this at just the right angle, you can see that the coracoid process actually resembles the wing and head of a bird or a raven, and that's what that means in Latin. So that's your axial skeleton. I hope this video is of some help to you and uh, that you do well at your studies.